Momentous of crisis are also momentous of opportunity. But if you have a position of responsibility, then it means you have to be always aware that you are serving. But be uncompromising in remaining deeply Africans. <laughs> Africans. When Forbes Africa released their March 2020 issue, a familiar face was on the cover, and that was the face of Grasa Michelle, an amazing and phenomenal African lioness who for this year was named Africa's most powerful woman. Well, if you have never met her, you might ask, what has she done to land herself in this position? Well, Grasa is just one of the women on the African continent who has a long list of accomplishments that would spend the whole day talking about. To start with, she led a powerful education ministry in the country of Mozambique, where she was also first lady at the same time, and she revolutionized education in Mozambique, and she left so many success stories on her way. But she also took on other roles, working with the United Nations and working with other world organizations to fight for women's rights and children's rights. Grasa Michelle is really a phenomenal lady, and for today, we are going to talk about moments which she has given advice, bits and bits of advice which she has left in her trail of a phenomenal career which she has had. And we're going to start by rule number one, remain deeply African. Do embrace all the innovations which the world can allow you to. Learn from all the experiences which from east to west, from north to south, you can choose at the best to meet your vision, but be uncompromising in remaining deeply Africans. <laughs> Africans. And I see then this initiative precisely by young Africans, for Africans, as the renewal is the renewal of the dream of freedom, which the forefathers of this continent, when they had that long vision to say, one day all of us will be free. Now this generation is said, freedom today has another meaning. The meaning is how do we grasp the best of knowledge, of science, of technology, to take the aspirations of millions of Africans to materialize in a way we rescue and we reclaim our own origin of being Africans, but we catch up, as Fred was saying, with the 21st century. Rule number two, and my personal favorite, the inclusion of women is actually a business case. There's very little space in which you see women in financial sector taking a center stage in the decision making. Whether it's uh, ministers of finance, whether it is uh, uh, central banks, whether it is the major banks on the continent, there's very little face and voice of women. Yet, we know that women are the biggest business community you can find. Not necessarily in the formal sector, but in the, in the informal sector, they deal with business every single day. Yet, there's no connection also between the informal and the formal. So New Faces, New Voices, Women in Finance, it is aiming at, one, to develop uh, mechanisms together with financial institutions where women will grow, will occupy significant positions within the financial sector. Out of merit, out of expertise, out of experience, we are not asking for them to sit there just for the sake of having women. It's because we recognize that there are hundreds of thousands of them 
who have the knowledge, who have the expertise, who have the experience, they would bring into the decision making perspectives from women which would allow these financial institutions to effectively meet the aspirations of half the population of our nations. In that process, they continue to make money, but at the same time, they serve a huge number of people and they put resources into their hands in a way they will grow their business and even they will manage better their families. So the nation will gain, the economy will gain, women will gain, and financial institutions will make a huge amount of money. So it's a business case. It's a business case we're making. Rule number three, and something we try to do very much on this channel, amplify the voices of African women. We need to create spaces where new generations of women take the center stage and they are the one who take from us and they can lead the transformation of women's status to the highest level. So for that, we say amplifying, multiplying faces is to have your face and the faces of this brilliant and talented and driven, passionate women who are making wonders in our countries to occupy the center stage in their countries, sub-regions, on the continent, and globally. So that we say African women are not only those who are illiterate, those who are dying of malaria, those who are in poverty. There is actually a surge of African women who really define our identity. And so amplifying the voices of those is exactly to be them who tell their stories, who tell the challenges they face, but the triumph over challenges to inspire many other women, but more particularly to inspire the new generation so that the young girl has to be looking at you, Beatrice, and say, if she's there, it's because I can be there, I can even be better than herself. To inspire a surge and an increase of very proud, very self-confident women who know that there's no limits to what they can achieve. Rule number four, moments of crisis are also moments of opportunity. At the height of the financial crisis, I was watching everywhere, everybody talking about restructuring the financial system, revisiting what had gone wrong, and there were lots of re, 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 revisiting. And I said to myself, but we are the voices of African women in all this. I couldn't see neither their voices in their faces. So I called a group of young people who are in the financial sector. I said, look, momentous of crisis are also momentous of opportunity. Take the stage, participate in this debate of reformulating the financial sector, particularly focusing on Africa. And we started out of that, we started one of now really powerful networks of African women in finance. And uh, we held already three summits in which we had ministers of finances, with CEOs of the biggest financial uh, banks, I mean, financial institutions on the continent. We have a huge support from the African Development Bank. But we engage women who are in financial institutions who need to be encouraged to grow to take leadership positions in these institutions. So one of the things which we have we succeeded to do is that this network, which is called the New Faces, New Voices in the financial sector, has become a reference, not only on the continent. We have relationship with global institutions. And Hillary, as a Secretary of State, 
you invited new faces, new voices to come and join exactly the efforts you are making to, for inclusive financial assets to women and your care for women in general. Rule number five, have positive impact and serve others. Wherever you are, you can be in a family, you can be working in a small or big community, you can be in a corporation, you can be in a school, a university, and you can be in ministries. Wherever you are, there's a way of doing things where you feel you have to do well, you have to be ethically conscious of what you do, you have to respect the dignity of those you work with, and more importantly, whatever you do, you are serving. I think in other terms I would say it's a way of being in society, it's a, a way of how you relate to others, and it is a way of how you connect and you develop empathy with good causes, and you protect those causes because you know they will impact positively in hundreds, in thousands, and sometimes in millions of people. So I don't have a theory for leadership. I would say it is a way of being in which you behave according certain principles, certain values in which you know whatever you do, it will impact on others. And because of that, you have to define those ethics which makes you relate to other. But if you have a position of responsibility, then it means you have to be always aware that you are serving. Rule number six, break the barriers and prove that it can be done. And actually, I think it was, uh, it was Clara who said, I started my business using only my own resources. And it's just for you to navigate and to move from using your own resources. And you even mentioned the insecurity, lack of confidence, right? That's exactly what I want to say. It's the biggest success. When you overcome the fears, the insecurities, the lack of uh, that strong ability to say, I can do it, and you overcome yourself. I think this is what we celebrate. It keeps millions of us as African women still, you know, without having that courage to move forward. So I'm, so I'm also celebrating this breaking of barriers, which are emotional, sometimes uh, psychological, but they are also lack of uh, knowledge and experience. And it's not all of us who have the courage to learn, hmm? just to learn. So I want us to celebrate this ability to break those barriers and to prove it can be done. And you are the example of yes. You have come along this level. Rule number seven, and this is especially for all the lionesses of Africa, find partners who trust in you and will not be threatened by your confidence and your success. How did, you, did I manage to, to marry two presidents? I didn't, no, 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 honestly, I didn't marry any president. No, 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 not at all. There's a huge confusion there. I married. I married two extraordinary human beings in different times in history. You know, I married Samora Michelle at the age of, of 30, okay? And I married Madiba was 53. So there was a huge difference between the two experiences in life. They were all, I mean, they were both, I mean, my English now. But they were both very different as human beings. But there was one fundamental quality which attracted me to, to them, they would respect me. It's just to respect me. And to accept me, 
to accept me knowing, knowing that I'm not a perfect person. And that was also the condition for me to accept them. I knew they were not perfect people, and we, we just have to, to be able to accept one another and respect. Absolutely. It's absolutely fundamental. Now, let me give you <laughs> a response which my dear one day. There was a, a journalist who tried to embarrass him. To say, uh, Mr. President, how, do you, how can you accept that you, your wife uh, is, is Mozambican? She didn't change to become South African because she, ma she married you. So she is Mozambican. And even worse, she is Michelle. She keeps the name of her first husband. She doesn't take, she doesn't take your name as Mandel. How can you live with this? And he made himself even more comfortable. <laughs> I was there. And he said, you know, I'm so grateful to her because she allows me to continue to be Nelson Mandela and she allows me to continue to be South African. <laughs> you hear? And it was brilliant and it killed it all. And that is, that is, that is when a human being is absolutely self confident with himself that he, he doesn't feel threatened to say why my wife now is not taking my name and why rule number eight spread the african story and make sure that you change the way the world looks at the african continent from now on will not allow anyone to talk about us without us raising very high our own voice and say, we are, and our dignity will be defined by ourselves, and the rest will have to accept us. Africa is re-emerging. Africa is in those young people who either see our young people as a problem of unemployment, they did not understand what's happening with our young people in terms of a creativity of changing even the way the world today has to do business. Just look at uh, the kind of creativity which is coming with African startup. It is ours. It is defined by our own way, our realities. Others will not understand. That's why they say our women in the market, in rural areas, etc., they say they are informal economy. They can't understand that in reality, our stability, our social stability, and our sense of cohesion is made by those millions of women who they call informal economy, but without them, we are not. I mean, it's not the so-called GDP <laughs> which makes our economies. It is important, but I want to say here, you, our t storytellers, you have to refine, the, redefine the concept of GDP. Rule number nine, you must be willing to learn. The causes I am engaged with are dictated by the people. First, it was my Mozambican people for freedom from colonialism. Then it was, I was given the responsibility of being Minister of Education at the early age of 28. I had to learn how to organize the uh, education system and that I really understood from the onset how girls' education was fundamental. And I made sure that I would know in every school how many children, but amongst them, how many girls in every single grade and even in every single classroom. Because I wanted to understand the dynamics of how girls are coming into the system, how they progress or they do not progress. So it has started long time ago. 
Then I was given an opportunity because of bad reasons. We had conflict in Mozambique and I had to learn how do you give an, a second opportunity of a child who has been heavily traumatized to become a child again mm -hmm. and to be able to learn and to enjoy being a child. So the Secretary General of UN asked me to lead the team which uh, produced the so-called Michelle study. Again, from the suffering of my children in Mozambique, I learned when I visited Bosnia, Colombia, you name it, I went to, to many different countries, Cambodia. I said, but it, it's similar. Every child has the same kind of a, so the protection of children for me, it came as a call to give them a voice. If you have gotten to this point, we hope you have already clicked, subscribed, and liked. But as you are about to go, we'll give you the last one. Rule number 10, build on the strength of others. I was brought up by my mother, and uh, my elder sister became a sort of a second mother to me. My family would, could be called a humble family in material terms. But it has been always a very united family, loving, caring for one another. And I grew up knowing that uh, I can be myself only in a context of uh, this family structure. And that has helped me all along my life to understand that uh, there's no anything you'll achieve as an individual you achieve within a context of uh, building on strengths of other people around you. Let me know in the comments below what you think is your favorite rule of all that advice that Grasa Macheo has given us in this video. Just leave it in the comments below and make sure that you write it and you can put quotes around it so that others might be inspired by what has inspired you. And until next time, my name is Maro.